Ladies and gentlemen, happy Independence Day. And today, we are going to officially start my MLB midseason check-in. So basically, we're going to be looking at the standings, we're going to be looking at uh, the stats, and then we're going to be looking at the participants for the Home Run Derby and the MLB All-Star rosters. It's going to be just all things MLB, this video. We got plenty of talk to talk about, so we're just going to get right into it. Quick disclaimer as usual, if you disagree with anything that I say or do, please let me know in the comments what you would change or just do differently. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Cue the intro. And now coming in fourth place, we have the Tampa Bay Rays. These two, by far, in my opinion, have been the biggest disappointments so far, so far in uh, MLB. But they have a record of forty-three and forty-three with a five hundred percentage exactly. Twelve and a, twelve games back from first place, twenty-three and twenty-five home record, twenty and eighteen away record. Uh, lost one was their last one, and six and four. Uh, in their last 10 so they love they've been winning 60% of their games in the last 10 matchups that that's that's pretty decent and now to my surprise at in third place the Red Sox have actually had a had a pretty good season so far 46 to 39 541 percentage 8.5 games back from first 2023 20, at home 26 16 away and the Rays and Red Sox are doing way better uh, at home away than they have been at home uh they've won three in a row and six and three their last 10 matchups and now these these next two teams have just been stealing the show uh in the east division you got the yankees 54 34 6 14 percentage two only two games back from first 24 16 at home 30 18 away lost two their last uh and lost uh, three seven record the last ten matchups. As for the Orioles, obviously having the second best record in baseball, fifty five and thirty one, six six forty percentage, no games back. Obviously since the first twenty nine seventeen at home, twenty six and fourteen away. Well, they've won two in a row and six and four their last ten matchups. All right, now moving on, we have the Central. Obviously, White Sox with the worst record in the entire league. 25 and 63, 284 percentage. 30 full games back from first place. That is not good. 16 and 29 at home, 9 and 34 away. They've only won 9 games away. They they won 1 and 4 and 6 in their last 10 matchups. That is not good. You guys need to do better. And now coming in fourth place, we have the Detroit Tigers with the record 39-47, 453 percentage, 15 games back, 19 to 22 at home, 20 and 25 away. Win, they've won their last game and also a 4-6 uh, last 10 record. Now these next three teams have actually been doing really good. I I predicted. The Orioles, I predicted that Bobby Witt was going to lead this franchise to fame and fortune. Uh, Royals, 48-40, almost to 50 wins. 545 percentage, 7 games back only. 31-17 at home, 17-23 away. They won their last game and a 6-4 a record in their last 10 matchups. And as for second place, we have the Minnesota Twins, 48-38. 558 percentage, six games back, 24 17 at home, 24 21 away. So they have a winning record of both home and away. They lost their last matchup and a 7 and 3 uh, record their last 10 matchups. And finally, we have the Guardians, 53 31, 631 percentage, 27 to 10 at home, 26 21 away, lost their last one, and a 500 percentage, 5 and 5, their last 10 matchups. And now wrapping up the American League, obviously we have the West, obviously, uh, of course the Athletics are in last place, 32-56, 364 percentage, 15 games back, 20-23 at home, 12-33 away, they've won their last two games and a 3-7 and record in their last 10 matchups. And now next up we have the Angels, 36-49. 424 percentage, 9.5 games back, 18 for 26 at home, and uh, 18 for 23 away, La lost their last three, but a 6-4 record for their last 10 matchups. 
And now, obviously, at third place, we have the World Series hangover coming in for the Rangers. 39-47, 453 percentage, seven games back, 20-21 at home, 18 for 27 away, lost their last one, and 3-7 and record. Uh, the last 10 matchups uh, talk about a World Series hangover. Uh, just everyone from the Rangers is just not having a good year. And now we have the Astros surprisingly making a little comeback from where they were a uh, the, uh, couple couple weeks ago. Obviously, they started out the season uh, behind the Athletics. 44-42. 512 percent just over the 500 mark. Uh, two games back uh, from first place. 24-19 at home. 20-23 away. They won their last game in eight and two record their last ten matchups. And then obviously coming in number one, we have the Seattle Mariners. 47 41, 534 percentage, 28 16 at home, 19 25 away. Lost their last four and a three and seven record their last ten matchups. Ho ho, and now we have the National League. I'm really happy to talk about this. Uh, fifth place, we have the Miami Marlins, 30-56, 3.49 percentage, 27 games back, 16 for 29 at home, 14 for 27 away, lost their last three, and a 4-6 and six record the last 10 matchups. Now in fourth place, we have the Nationals, 40 for 46, uh, 4.65 percentage, 17 games back, 18 and 21 at home, 22 and 25 away, four, they won their last game, and a 3 and 7 record, their last 10 matchups. And now we have the Mets, 42 and 42, exactly 500 percentage, 14 games back, 21 25 at home, 21 and 17 away, uh, lost their last matchup, and a 6 and 4 percentage, their, a 6 and 4 record, their last 10 matchups. And now we have the Braves, 47 37. 560 percentage, nine win, nine games back, 27 and 15 at home, 20 and 22 away, won their last game, and an exactly 500 percentage their last 10 matchups. And at first place, we have the Phillies, obviously having the best record in the entire MLB: 57 wins, 29. Losses 33 and 14 away and 7 and 3 record the last 10 matchups. They're undisputedly the best team in baseball right now. All right, we're just gonna start speeding through a little bit because no one wants to see this for uh, a complete hour. So for the West, we have the Rockies, Giants, Diamondbacks, Padres, and Dodgers. The only thing I really switched was the Diamondbacks and Padres, but other than that, it looks like I'm I'm predicting right. Uh, if you, if you didn't see my prediction video for the um for the start of the season, there I mean at the end of the season I'll be doing a little reaction to my video to see if any of my predictions were right. And then obviously for the Central, we have the Cubs, the Reds, the Pirates, the Cardinals. And the Brewers. The Brewers are going to rule this division for a long time, as long as they have the manager. Alright, so now we're just going to be talking a little bit about the stats. So we're going to go over to uh, batting average. And then we're just going to see the top leaders, like top 10. Obviously, you see Bryce Harper uh, comes in at 10th with 303. Uh, Mookie Betts with an um, average of 304. Uh, Jose Altuve with the average of 306. Luis obviously still maintaining that batting average with 310. Same with uh, Carlos Correa. Both batting 310. Jason Profar, the left fielder from San Diego. Uh, 314 average. Bobby Witt Jr., also a 3.14 average. Luis Rangifo with a 315 average. Aaron Judge with a 318 average, and Shohei Otani currently leads the MLB right now with a 319 average. All right, next up we have home runs. Obviously, you can see that Aaron Judge leads the league in home runs with already has 32. Uh, Shohei Otani has 27. Gunnar Henderson with uh, 26. Jose Ramirez with a 23, Anthony Santander with a 22, Marcelo Zuna with 21, Bryce Harper obviously you know our guy with 20 as long as well as Christian Walker 
Josh Naylor, uh, Juan Soto. Then you have Teoscar Hernandez with 19, as well as Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. Giancarlo Stanton has hit 20, as it as sorry, uh, 18. Rafael Devers has hit 18, as well with Pete Alonso. And then you have Cattell Marte, Kyle Schwarber, Brent Rooker, and Nolan Gorman all hitting 17. And now moving on, we have RBIs. Obviously, Gunnar Henderson and Bryce Harper are tied at 10th place with uh, 58 RBIs. Teoscar Hernandez and Christian Walker are tied for 8th place with 59. Then you have Josh Naylor and Juan Soto tied for 6th place with 61 RBIs. Then Shohei Otani comes in at 5th with uh, 64 RBIs. Marcelo Zuna. Uh, with 67 RBIs. Then you have Alec Bohm with 70 RBIs. Uh, just had just had a two-run home run last night to defeat the Chicago Cubs to uh, put him at 70 RBIs. Then you have Jose Ramirez with 76 RBIs. And then, obviously, it's not really close. You have Aaron Judge, obviously, with uh, 83 RBIs. You know, he leads the league in home runs. He leads the league. In RBIs, and he's second in the league in uh in uh, average. So if the season ended today, then he he would have the triple crown. Well, obviously he he's got to beat um Otani in average, but 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 still great season by Aaron Judge. All right, now obviously we'll uh, go to slugging percentage. Aaron Judge obviously leads the league with a seven eleven. Slugging percentage, uh, you have 642 slugging by Shohei Otani, Gunnar Henderson with a 593, Bryce Harper with a 582, Rafael Devers with 575, 560 for Juan Soto, Marcelo Zuna 558, Jordan Alvarez 555, 545 for Jose Ramirez, and a 543 for Bobby Witt Jr. And now we'll head over to pitching. Obviously, with uh, ERA, we have both my guys, oh, with all three of my guys, Christopher Sanchez, Ranger Suarez, and Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler with a 2.74 ERA. Uh, Christopher Sanchez with a 2.48, who's just named uh, National League Pitcher of the Month for June. Uh, 2.41 ERA. Uh, and obviously, Ranger Suarez, second in the league, only behind Seth Lugo, with a 2.27 uh, ERA. And now we have wins. Obviously, Chris Sale and Seth Lugo tied for first with 11 wins. And then you have Ranger Suarez uh, and Grayson Rodriguez tied for third with uh, 10 wins. And then you have Zach Wheeler, uh, Sonny Gray, Carlos Rodon, Aaron Nola, Mitch Keller, Corbin Burns, <laughs> Luis Gill, Tariq Skubal, Gavin Stone, uh, you, you get the point. A lot of guys are tied for uh, fifth place with uh, nine wins. And now we're going to wrap this up with strikeouts. Obviously, Garrett Crotchet with 141 strikeouts. Then we have Tyler Glasnow with 136. Dylan Sees with 130. Chris Sale with 127. Cole Reagans with 126, Freddie Peralta with 120, and Zach Wheeler and Tariq Skubal with uh, 119. Alright, so now, basically, we're going to be going through the starters for the uh, MLB All-Star Game. So, for the catcher, uh, starting is Adley Rutschman, and his backup will be Salvador Perez. For the uh, Kansas City Royals, I think these are two great decisions. I think Salvador Perez and Adley Rutschman have both had phenomenal years. All right, now for uh, first base, uh, I think, uh, do my eyes deceive me? Uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has been selected to be the starter, and his backup which should be is Ryan Mountcastle. I mean, I, I don't. I personally do not agree with this. Obviously, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has not had as good of a year. Nowhere even close as Ryan Mountcastle. All right, now for second base, we have Jose Altuve. And his backup will be Marcus Simeon. I, I personally had Marcus Simeon. But I, like I said in my, uh, in my voting video, it could have gone either way. Uh, I think these are two great decisions. And uh, they've been the two best second basemen of the uh, American League. All right, now for shortstop, obviously you guys know I had Gunnar Henderson and Bobby Witt Jr. will be his backup. Bobby, Bo both have just been phenomenal. There's nothing else to say. 
And now for third base, easily, it, it has easily been Jose Ramirez and his backup, uh, Jordan Westberg, uh, for designated hitter. Obviously, you know, um, Jordan Alvarez easily has been him. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn uh, is his backup. I, I think these are two great decisions. I mean, uh, most of the Orioles players are selected for the All-Star, which is nice. All right, and now for outfield. You already know Aaron Judge. Juan Soto, and to my and to my surprise, Stephen Kwan. I mean, I, uh, okay, I, I respect it, but um, I would have picked uh, Kyle Tucker, and obviously Ant Anthony Santander has also been really good. And um, the pitching will come out very soon. I'll give a, a few shorts about that. Um, one for AL and one for NL, but that is the starters for the American League team. And now moving on to the National League, where the starting catcher will be um, William Contreras. He really deserves it. His backup will be none other than your boy JT Real Muto, uh, which I'm I'm assuming since he, because he's a backup, he because he's uh, injured. All right, now uh, for first base, we have Bryce Harper. He will easily, easily be the starter and I'm assuming no runner up has been announced yet. Uh I'm a, I'm assuming that uh it will be uh Will, Freddie Freeman from the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now we have second base where it will be Cattell Marte from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh his runner up will be Luis Arise even though uh Luis Arise um Oh, sorry, let me scroll down for you. Even though Luis Arise has been, uh, you know, really good, he's just like an average hitter, you know, he doesn't hit any RBIs or home runs. Cattell Marte, even though he's not the greatest average hitter, you know, he still has been uh, pretty consistent uh, when it comes to other stats too, not just average. All right, now we have shortstop, and uh, for shortstop, obviously, it's been Trey Turner. Look, I know he's not the best fielder in the world, but... You got to understand, he's still batting over 330 this far into the season. I think he just easily deserves it. And um, his runner-up will be Mookie Betts, even though he has been hurt. I'm assuming that's why he's the uh, backup. And now for third baseman, I mean, come on, who else? It's it's easily been Alec Bohm. And uh, backup, I'm not sure if I agree with this all that much. I think it should have been Nolan Arenado or Austin Riley, not going to lie, because Manny Machado has not had that good of a year, in my opinion. And now we have Shohei Otani. I mean, come on, who else? Being the designated hitter starter, um, I, you could make the argument for Kyle Schwerber, but it's just, come on, Schwerber's just not as near as good as Shohei Otani. And now for outfield, we have Christian Yelich, Jurgensen Profar, and Fernando Tatis, I mean, there haven't been that many good uh, selections, good options so far. But their backups are two more Phillies, Brandon Marsh, Nick Castellanos, and T.L. Scar Hernandez. Like, those three have deserved it. T.L. Scar Hernandez, obviously, we looked over the stats, and he was top ten in uh, a lot of categories. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I know it was long, but we try to make it as entertaining as possible. Uh, make sure to leave a like on this video, and please make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. I'm trying to get monetized very soon, very soon, very soon. So, I'll see y'all guys the next time I upload. Peace.